Hi everyone, and welcome to the second episode in a series where we create a design system in Figma called FDS. In this episode, we'll be creating our primitive colors, but before we get into it, let's answer this question. What are primitive colors? Primitive colors are baseline hues like blue, red, and green that act as the default color palette for your design system. FDS has 13, which are actually brand, blue, purple, violet, red, pink, orange, yellow, green, teal, cyan, black, and white. All right, what's the brand color? Well, the brand color is your brand's primary or main accent color. And for the other colors, well, their hex values are up to you. But I started with my brand blue and created the others by changing their hue, saturation, and lightness values to create a set that looks like it's cohesive tonally. Next up, we create a nine step tint and shade scale for the base colors. Tints are created by increasing the lightness value of the base color and shades are created by decreasing it. Now there's two ways you can do this. Manually, where you overlay the base colors with white and black with opacity increments in both directions of 20, 40, 60, and 80. Then flattening them and literally color picking them one by one. Who's got time for that? Well, me apparently. Or you could just use a plugin. Thankfully, there's one called Color Tint and Shade Generator that'll give us the same outcome. Let's select each color, run the plugin, and create their color scales. So let's grab brand and its hex value, run the plugin, enter the hex value, and generate. All right, so it's taking that to zero, zero. Let's see if the others end up there. I'm just gonna do blue, which is the same color. Wonder if it remembers it? Nope. So let's enter that in, generate. Okay, and that placed it just above the other one. Let's keep going. And we might uh, speed run the rest of this. So here we go. All right, that plugin was great for a nine tint scale, but we need 19 neutral tints, which come from black. So we're gonna use the ones from the starter file that I've already flattened and added their values. You can see that here. They go all the way from ODOD all the way up to F2, and then just group them with the other scales. Let's go back up here and select everything it just generated. Move them out of the way. I'm just gonna zoom out so we can give them some space. I'm just gonna grab that first one and move it down. Keep on doing that until they're all separated. Just click and drag to select them all again. And come to the bottom right and select this icon. I'm just gonna add some space between each one. I'm gonna make that 32. And now they're created, we need to name them. And we name our primitive colors using this naming convention. Color forward slash value, which will give us blue 500 or pink 100, for example. And to do that, I'm gonna click and drag to select all the brand colors. Go to rename it and rename selected layers. It's gonna start up, let's just add brand. Okay, let's do that for all the others. That's blue, and we'll speed run the rest, just like we did the tint sets. Okay, and with that done, you should have everything named properly. So that's brand, blue, violet, pink. Yeah, everything seems fine. All right, now we need to name every single column its value, right? So I'm just gonna click and drag again to grab the left-hand side. Use, rename it. And this time, select layer name and then go forward slash 100. That's gonna give every value that should be 100, 100. And you can see that there. Let's do that for the rest of them. This is 200, 300, 400, 500, 
600, 700, we're almost there. Eight hundred and nine hundred. Okay, let's select the random color orange. And you can see that everything has its correct name. Okay, before we go to the next step, we have to reverse the order of these layers. So let's use reverse layer order plugin. And then just do that for each set. Let's also select all of those frames and run reverse layer order. So brand is at the top and sign is at the bottom. Now we need to turn our colors into variables. And that's normally done by opening the variables panel, having a collection there or creating one, then creating each color individually by giving it a name and a text value. Instead, we can convert them into styles with the Styler plugin. Then convert those styles into variables with the Styles to Variables plugin. So let's select all of these by clicking and dragging. Then hold down Shift while you still got Command held down and click and drag the neutrals. All right, now go up, grab the Styler plugin and run Generate Styles. And we can see in the design panel that they've all been created. Fantastic. but Everything's out of order, so let's just put them back in. So we've got blue, purple, violet, red, pink, orange, yellow, green, teal, cyan, and neutral. And since most of the interface is gonna be made up out of brand and neutral, let's just move that underneath there. Okay, and let's just check finally to see if they're all in order. See how that one was at the bottom there? All the others seem fine. Okay, let's run the styles to variables plugin. It's got 118 color styles, great. Let's give our collection the name primitives and then convert styles into variables. So let's open the variables panel and there you go. You've created 10 scales for each of your colors, turn them into a collection of variables called primitives. You can now delete the styles as they are no longer needed. We'll also go into the variables panel, select all of them, right click and select hide from publishing. Why? Well, our primitive color variables will be assigned to our semantic color variables, and we'll only allow designers to use the semantic variables, so we can hide them so color is assigned in the interface in a way that will scale better, and also allow for native light and dark mode switching inside Figma. Let's select all the color styles, just delete them, select the first one, hold down shift, go all the way to the bottom, select 900, right click anywhere, go edit variables, and then hide from publishing. Now that our variables are set up, you can really just select everything here and delete it. If you'd like to display your variables, run a plugin called Variable Color Style Guide. Let's just select primitives, leave this as it is, and then create swatches. Okay, let's just zoom in and see what we got. Go all the way to the top, and we can see that the Variable is assigned properly, and you've got some other information there, like the name, hex value, and RGBA. I think this has an HSL. Yep, so I'll turn off RGB and then turn that back on. Okay, this needs to be aligned to the right. And there's some shortcuts up here, so you can just skip to each section. And from here, you can just modify that component to look consistent with the way you document all of the variables in this library. So let's do that by just moving it up here. Selecting the color, changing it to 32 by 32, give it a border radius of four, change its width to 704. Okay, the card auto layout needs to be changed to horizontal. Swatch is fine, the token details auto layout, change to horizontal and change top and bottom padding to eight. Select the color code and change that. 
to horizontal as well. Then select the text layers and color code and change them to auto width. Go to the card layer and then turn off the border. Okay, that's looking nice and clean. What's happened over here? We've got the swatch as four. And then the card has got eight. All right, let's go and change the card layer to four as well. Okay, we've got some stragglers over here on the right. So let's just make sure the auto layout is correct. Let's change this to there. Select all of them. And go fill container. All right, that's happening all the way down here as well. So let's speed run this. Okay, it looks like everything's fixed, but let's go in, select the index and change that width to 704 as well. Okay, so we wanna get these over to the color and put them here. Just gonna grab this layer called container and copy it. Bring it over to here and paste it. Add a white fill, select the section layer here and delete it. Go back to here Let's grab everything from index to cyan and copy it. Go back to color, select that container inside the primitive color page and paste. Let's just select that container and give everything more space, so 32. Okay, looking good. Okay, and just to clean the documentation up a little bit, let's go back and change this to a capital B, a capital P. Do that here as well. And that's it for primitive color variables. In the next episode, we'll be creating semantic color variables. And as always, I hope you're looking after yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.